So to begin, I'm just going to grab two clips that I want to transition into each other. And I'm going to place one on top of the other in the layer panel. So here's layer one, and then I'll grab my second clip, and I'll sort of create this overlap. That's where the transition will happen on a layer above, so that we can see the layer underneath. So to begin, here's the top clip. This is the one we want to bring in with masking. So we're going to highlight it, and in the Effect Controls panel, we'll create a new mask. You can use whatever shape you want, but I'll just use the four-point polygon for this example. So that'll automatically create this basic square, and if you're in the program window, and you have the mask highlighted, you can move this around, and you can also adjust every point, and you can also add points, so this is pretty simple. We're just going to sort of create a rough shape, I'm gonna try to make it look a little less default. Some not like the original square, more like a unique shape like that. And I think it'd be interesting if his face comes in first. So, if we're gonna do it in the step variation, we're gonna have to do this using cuts. For some reason, mask path keyframes don't allow you to use hold type keyframes. That's if you highlight this, you know, it doesn't allow you for some reason to use hold. So we're gonna simulate that by using cuts. And that's why there's two variations of this method. So, we have our first path, and we're going to create our first cut. And since I want this to happen relatively quickly, I'm not going to have each frame stay on the screen for too long. So I'll create a cut there, and now we're working on our second one. And the reason we're doing it this way is because you see, the mask is already there, we're just on a different cut, and we're going to simply continue expanding this mask out a little bit more. So you can do it in three steps, two steps, four steps, five however many you want. So, I'm going to expand it out a little bit more. Again, we're going to create a cut next one. We'll do the same thing. Highlight the mask this time, expand it out even further. And if I do leave a little bit around the edges, that'll be fine because when we cut into the full original clip, we're just going to delete the mask. If you find it hard to work in this menu, so you can always zoom out, you know, maybe go to like 10% or 25%. That way you can see your entire mask and be able to manipulate the box to stretch it out past your program window. So that'll be our third one. And then when we get back to our original clip, we can simply highlight the mask and just delete the mask entirely. So now we just have our default clip, but everything happens in order. So if I play that back, we have one, two, three, four. And you know, if you have music, maybe you could time those cuts to the music. Since it is one linear clip, if I did want to adjust the points over a little bit, I can always, you know, drag one in, drag the other out, or adjust the points in this way. And I suppose if you wanted to also cut to different portions of the clip with this method, you could. You don't have to make it linearly be smooth. And actually, there's a tool that does just that in one step. That's the rolling edit tool. And you know, the same thing I was doing, the rolling edit tool will do for you. So, if you didn't learn anything yet in this tutorial, hopefully that's an interesting one that you learned. It pulls one side in while pulling the other one out. So for this type of effect, that can be a great way to adjust those points. Now, let's say I wanted to do the same thing except, I'll show you the animated variation of it. And I'll also show you the reverse of instead of revealing a clip, shrinking the clip or revealing a different clip, for example. So same thing in this case, we have this little trimmed out portion. I'll cut it just to keep things clean. And when we want to start animating, we'll just make that mask. In this case, since I'm animating out, I'm going to start with a full mask, and I'm going to add a keyframe on the mask path, and then we can move forward a little bit, and we can start bringing those corners in. It's important that you only bring the corners in, and you don't move the entire shape, because it will sort of look wobbly if you do that. So we can add a few keyframes, gradually bringing each corner in. Until we get all the way to this small center position, and then we can, to solve this problem of what to do for the final bit, we can actually add a mask expansion keyframe, and we can make the mask go negative like 200 or something. And so if I play that back, now we have this sort of shrinking mask effect, and you can adjust the spacing of the keyframes to make it happen faster or slower if you want. And also another way to sort of simulate the cuts if you don't want it to be so smooth is by duplicating these keyframes. So since we can't right click and put them on hold for some reason, what we can do is copy the first keyframe for example, get really close to the second keyframe and then paste it. 
So now we've kept that one position until this small amount of time, and then we can do the same thing for the second one. Highlight it, Command C to copy, get close to the next one, and paste it. And we can repeat that process, highlighting the one, getting close to the other, and pasting it. And in that way, we can still create sort of a more staggered effect by manipulating those keyframes. Just another idea for you if you don't want to go the cutting route. So that's just an example of transitioning out, but you can also use this more fluid method for transitioning in, like I showed in the beginning. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.